Hello, this is Casper Anderson again, and welcome to another Umbraco tutorial. As if you watched the previous videos, you'll know this is about the contact form, and this video is about the controller. So let's get started. And as you know, like the models, we don't actually have a folder for the controllers either, so let's quickly make one. So we'll add a folder, and this will just call controllers. There we go. And uh, let's just build one. And, uh, uh, and this is a new thing for those who have not, uh, who have been, who have been messing with MVC, but not perhaps on Braco. MVC just has a normal controller, a render MVC controller, I think it's called, stuff like that, that you inherit from. But here we want to inherit from something called an M a, a surface controller. Surface controllers in Braco do uh, also inherit from render MVC controller, I think it is. But um, but there are some extra things that we can use which we do want to use, uh, like I think it's I published content, which is also an Umbraco thing, and you know we we can just use a lot of the nice Umbraco stuff like current page and all that good stuff. So yeah, we'll just make a new class, and uh, we'll just call it contact, S and you could just call it uh, all. Okay, in case you didn't know, all controllers. Uh, controller classes must be suffixed with the word controller. And in the old days of Mabraco, you had to actually you actually had to suffix every name. So for mine's called contact, and then the suffix has to be controller. Uh, that's the way MVC understands how to look for things and all that and and like and stuff like that. So, but now we're not working with a control, we're working with a surface controller, and in the old days in Umbraco, as far as I know, I, I, weren't, I wasn't there in the, so to speak, old days, but they had to suffix it with surface controller, of course not two F, Fs, only one, but I don't think you have to do that anymore, you can try that, but I like to do it anyway, so that if you do have some, uh, some, some logic with MVC and some that's in Braco, then you could perhaps t tell them apart and then definitely know this is the surface controller. So let's add that. Right now we have class, and let's get to let's get building. So the first thing we want to do now is to actually go back into our form. Was one our form? Our um, yeah, our form. There we go. And we have this right, but this will never um, get posted uh, to the right place because we're not used. We're, yeah, we're not telling it where to post to. We're just telling it. Oh, by the way, post. It has no idea where to post to. Um, we just get hold of the. Yep, there we go. So what we need to do, we need to, we is we need to uh, use a, a special Umbraco thing, which is an uh, begin. It was called a thing called begin Umbraco form. So I'll just show you what that code looks like. So let's just take away the form tags a minute. There we go. And what we need to do is use something like was, there it was, like this. And then of course the open brackets and the closing brackets here, or closing bracket I should say. Right, so we're just saying using and then HTML dot begin and bracket form and then this card is from an old project. Basically we want to reference our controller and then we want to give it the uh, give it a name. And we'll come back to that later. So basically let's just take this away for now and then the what should be in here instead of card is test application. Because that's the name of our, our application. So test application, you can see we get the namespace up here. I think we could actually also just say um, at using test application like that, and then we should actually be able to access whatever's in there. So, for example, um, controllers. No. Anyway, so test application dot controllers dot contact surface controllers. So that's the name. I wonder if we can use that now instead um, so if we here say dot controllers we should be able to here just to send in the contact service controller which we can so that's also an, uh, a way of doing it um, and then what's the problem yeah see the problem now here is we are telling it 
we're telling uh, here at Visual Studio to use the contact surface controller but the controller um, let me just see here a minute is inheriting from our model so and our page isn't so that's going to be a bit of a problem oh actually I forgot one thing to do in our contact surface controller here we need to inherit from the surface controller and that's found in this in the umbraco.web.mbc namespace we'll just add that so we are in a bit of a dilemma here because in our contact page we could just go up to here um, where is it yeah here and then just change this to uh, to inherit from our model but then we can't use stuff like current page or model dot content for that matter and we might want to use that for the page name or for some text on the page that we you know in a rich text editor field that someone might want to enter so what we're going to have to do is we grab all of let's just grab this code actually grab this code here and we go into our partials uh, folder and we add a new view page and this will just called uh, we'll just call contact and then just form because this is just the form there we go and now we have a contact form and we don't need any of that let's put in the form first of course there's a problem because where does it get this from so let's start with putting this in yep, whatever that works now this works fine but of course again where's it gonna get uh, how this is not gonna work so what we need to do is write at and help inherit if I can spell of course that needs to be close to here and then umbraco dot web dot mvc and before we had the Umbraco template page but that's not the case anymore we need an Umbraco view page we open that and close it there we go and then in here we want to get hold of our model which is our contact model and that comes up and it immediately recognizes it and then we can reference it via the test application dot models dot contact model so now we, we are inheriting from the model and the reason we need to do that, actually this doesn't need, as I said before, to inherit from the model like this, but one thing that does need to do is when I suddenly now create some new fields because how do we, we, we need to send values from these fields, the input fields on uh, into the controller and we can't do that like this so we need something new and that is the at HTML dot and then uh, we of course do label for and then we have some overloaded methods here, so let's just go through them. They do look a bit boring to be honest, so let's just skip that. So I don't think I've ever used it to be honest. Let me just check an old project a minute. Um, no, I never did. I really never did. Okay, so let's just leave the label. So instead what we do, we do at HTML dot and then text box. Oh, not text box for and what do we want it for? You can see, when we do this all of a sudden, there are weird, weird names here, so this makes no sense. Not for me anyway, but what we do is we write, for example, x, and it doesn't come up and help us, we write x, and then a lambda expression, as it's called, and then again, another again, x, and then we, when we press, and you see this references our contact model, so we can pr press the dot now, and suddenly now we get access to all the properties so we have the ID, the message, the name and the email so the first one we want, we don't actually want the ID that will be passed on but we want the, the email so we want to create a text box for the email um, yeah, let's create, well I want to put in two more things actually so we'll do a comma, we'll do new and this is HTML attributes so we'll do some new ones here, we'll, and the way you do is you say, com uh, of course, comma to reference to start the new overload method, and then write new like this, and then at, and you press control space, you can write class now, and that will come up, so new class is equal to, and this will be the email from class, and then comma, and while we're inside the parentheses here, or the square brackets, 
or whatever you call it, then we are we're not doing a, no, a new overloaded method. We're just passing in HTML attributes, and the next one would be placeholder. And placeholder is equal to, um, for example, email, like that. So that's good. So we can now grab all this and we can uh, put it in instead of this there we go and we can continue down here as well like that and do it for this as well of course there are a couple of things we need to change we can't just put email 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 we'll change the email to the name and this is of course the name from and placeholder should be name and that's fine and then of course we don't want a text box for we want a text area for our message and this is the message from and then of course the placeholder is the message um yeah and that is fine and the submit button is still perfectly fine that just needs to submit and that will, that will do its, uh, its job so that's perfect so now the next thing we want to do is use this in a proper way. So if we go back to our uh, contact page, a minute, there we go. Now we put this into a form inside a uh, partial view, and we need to pull that out, of course. And we could just pull out the partial view, but uh, let's do this in a more good, in a better way, so to speak. So we go into our controller here and we'll create a new method or new uh, a new action result as of course we'll say public action result and why is that not working result okay that's because I didn't include the namespace there we go and then we'll just call that um, show form for example and uh, there we go and and the only thing we want this form to do is just return a partial view and of course we have some overloaded methods and we want to pass in two things the first thing we want to pass in is a string of the view name so of course we want to pass in a string and the views name is contact form dot CSHTML but it's only the name we need not the type or the suffix and then we want to pass in a model so each time we we pull down this model. We want to pass, uh, sorry, this uh, partial view. We want to pass in an empty model so that nothing is in the. Um, there's nothing. There's nothing in it, of course. So we'll create a new and then contact model, and then just call. We'll just make it empty. We could pass in values, as far as I remember, but we're not going to do that now. We don't need it. So we'll just use the test application dot models, and we now have access to our model. Of course we need a semicolon, and that is it. That will show the form. So now, on our page, let's just go back to our contact page. Here now we can use, uh, let's just go back a minute. If I reload, you can just suddenly see now, if localhost, there we go. There's nothing in it. It's empty. But now, if we use, oh, let's just get back in a minute. There we go. Now we can use the HTML dot action. So HTML dot action, and you can see that it can. Uh, there's seven overloaded methods, but we want the one that is called uh, this one. So the first thing we want is the action name, and we called it show form, if I remember. Oh, and this is of course a string. So show form, and then a comma, and then we want to give the controller name. And the controller name was, uh, let me just see a minute, contact surface controller. So let's just save that, build it, and if everything has gone correctly, we should be able to look at our page, reload it, and something has gone wrong. No route in the table matches the supplied values. Damn! I wonder what I did wrong. Ah, yes, of course, that is my bad. When you reference a controller, you don't actually write the controller because that's how MVC knows it. So you just write contact surface 
and then it knows, well, I'm looking for a controller, so it will go to the controller uh, folder and look for contact surface and then automatically add the controller. So we reload again. There we go, nothing's changed except for, of course, the placeholders with which I added. Uh, otherwise, everything's the exact same. Okay, this might be a little bit smaller, but that's not a problem. We can just use CSS to start that. Um, yeah, so we could submit now, and now something goes wrong because, of course, uh, we're doing something else. But uh, let's expand on this a little bit. Let me just see a minute. Boom, boom, boom. Yep, yeah, okay, so we go back into our service controller. And now we want to build a new action result. So, public action result. And this we will call handle form post, for example. And a thing we want to pass in here is our contact model. And we'll give it the name of model and not capital M because there's always something called model. So we don't want to overwrite it. Right. So as it says there's a problem here. Not all car code pass return a value. Of course we haven't done anything yet. Right. So let's start to get this to work. <laughs> Actually, I think I will cut the video here. That will make everything a lot easier. Um, because I also need to read up on a bit of stuff about the service, uh, co um, content service, which I cannot remember. So yeah, I'll see you in the next movie for the final part. Take care.